to my little fellow Beach Bum traders. Thank you for joining us for part two of our weekly trading game plan for the week of May 23rd through 27th. Thank you for joining our live stream today, Douglas PC, Spacula. Let me know if y'all can hear okay, hopefully. If you uh, have not seen part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week, titled Sell the Rips in Bear Markets, uh, we would highly recommend that you uh, watch uh, part one of the weekly trading game plan, which provides all of our market analysis, our input data, etc. So, and can somebody in the chat give me a thumbs up if uh, sounds working okay? So we'll we'll go ahead and get started. Um, great, thank you, Spacula. I appreciate it. Um, We'll go ahead and get started again. Uh, part one provided us all of our market analysis data. Now in part two, we're going to do all of our updates to our watch list, et cetera. Uh, look at any tickers, uh, symbols that you want to take a look at. And this Google Docs, I will add as a pinned comment um, in, uh, to this video once we uh, complete the notes. And you should have access to those notes, uh, both for Part one uh, is a pin comment on part one, and uh, part two is a pin comment on this video uh, once we finish. And you can find the link to this um, part one also in the description box as well as other related videos. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to cover uh, updates from some of the trades that we made uh, last week. Uh, o, which is Realty Income, we got stopped out of our long position that we had entered on 512. We stopped out at uh, 518 at 67 for a 6% ROI. Uh, nice profit. Congratulations to any of our other fellow beach bug traders who also uh, profited from that swing trade or scalp in Realty Income. Uh, again, we will watch uh, O. It's a little bit high right now. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on it for it to come down to that 65 or below level again, and we'll swing it again. Um, it's We've swung uh, O profitably a uh, number of times over the years. It's great. It pays a monthly dividend, uh, so we really like that. So. SVXY, this has got to be, I, I think I think SVXY and, and playing volatility has become my, my favorite trade. Um, we swing volatility with SVXY going short and UVXY going long on volatility. Actually, uh, that short uh, using SVXY I think is my favorite because uh, the VIX by its definition uh, retraces to its mean it reverts to its mean so when you catch it at a peak uh, it's pretty much guaranteed at some point to come back down and uh, so you can see we've had several long position or several positions scalp positions in the VIX using SVXY which were very profitable uh, the first one we got we entered on 5.6 got stopped out on 5.17 uh, for a 22 percent ROI and we turned around and went long again on the 19th and then got stopped out on the 20th and again for a, a 4% ROI. So uh, you can see these are very profitable. Um, we will continue to play scalping the VIX, uh, shorting peaks, spikes using SVXY. Um, and then when it bottoms out below 20, down in 16, uh, we'll long with UVXY. Um, so again, I, I think this is a great way, even in this choppy market, even in a bear market. I mean, with the high volatility, this is a great opportunity uh, to make money uh, playing volatility. And, and I, I plan on doing a whole separate video on how to how to play volatility using uh, UVXY, SVXY, and maybe uh, there's a couple others I haven't really looked in detail. Um, on, but I, I need to do some research in some of the other uh, ETFs that you can play uh, volatility. So, um, BOO, uh, we got stopped out of our, this is the uh, very popular ETF on the S&P 500. We entered on 5.9 and got stopped out, pretty much break even, uh, which is fine. Uh, 
we're kind of watching VOO, and in a minute I'll look at, I'll show you our comparison of VOO versus VTI versus VT, and we have a separate video comparing them, but uh, we've made some updates recently as well. And at about the same time, we got stopped out of our position in VTI, pretty much break even on that as well. Uh, but then we went long again on VTI on the 20th. So with this big breakdown in the markets, uh, we got back in to VTI cheaper. So you can see previously we were at 201 something, we got back in at 192. So this is kind of a lesson learned to, um, you know, protect your profits and stopping out you know we stopped out break even and then we bought back lower so uh this is kind of part of our strategy as well is you know if it's going to roll over and turn down we'll stop out break even profit whatever protect your profits and then we'll buy it back low and we'll swing it again uh assuming something uh macro in the markets has drastically changed that that no longer makes it attractive and then we'll take it off our watch list so those are our trade updates for this week. Again, you can get these real time uh, by joining our pat Patreon. Uh, we post them as quickly as possible to our patrons. And then uh, they get automatically posted or are manually posted in the alerts channel of our uh, Beach Club Trading Discord server. So you can see here uh, we have some and uh, you'll see this again. Some are automatically posted when they hit a an alert in thinkorswim that i have and then if we actually take the trade then i'll update it with the trade we actually took and if not then i will post the update uh in the alerts channel so again this, this is for our patrons um, you can get those real-time updates so now let's talk about our, our watch list and i'll jump over to the st stock screen and um, Weeble, and we'll go through our watch list. So here's my main, uh, let me get to my main watch list in uh, Weeble on the stock screen in Weeble. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it to sort properly. It's not it's not so sorting. Okay, there we go. I want to sort by symbol. Um, okay, so one of the things, so one of the updates you'll see is we took big off of our, uh, we moved big back to, which is big lots, we moved back that back to the bullpen. Um, it broke down through support. It also, big lots has earnings on the 27th. And their next ex dividend date is on June 10th. So, given that it broke down through support, and I can flip over and, uh, to the bullpen and we can see big, big lots. Okay, so you see it, it broke down through support under pressure from the bad uh, retail earnings from like Walmart, Target, etc., which I, I think is kind of silly. Um, because Big Lots is a discounter who can benefit from uh, the uh, supply chain issues and the inventory issues that some of the major retailers are having. But needless to say, it got pushed down to support, below support, and uh, has yet to stabilize. So we lowered the price target. We moved it to the bolt end. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it um, and see if it establishes a, a good support down there. But again, we want to wait till after its earnings date and after that uh, potentially right at that ex dividend date may be when the best opportunity is to uh, get big lots so another one we're adding this week is sco sco is a an etf um, it's a short on oil and you can see it's a short actually on wti crude uh, index so it's actually on the price of oil um, the other one that we're watching you'll see in our watch list is drip and DRIP is a short on oil as well, but it is a ETF composed of oil and gas exploration companies. So it moves with the price of those um, oil and gas companies, not necessarily directly with the price of oil. So the price of oil can go up and down, uh, you know, but the price of those oil companies can go a different direction. You know, oil might be going up, there's something else going on in those companies causes drip to go down so but we we you'll see we prefer drip uh but we're watching both of 
Um, if oil spikes back up to 130, 150 higher, wherever it peaks, uh, we're looking for further opportunities to short oil using DRIP or SCO, whichever is the, the more attractive risk reward at the time. Uh, we do still have our long position in DRIP. We've sold and uh, covered calls against it, made some money selling covered calls against our position in DRIP. And uh, if uh, eventually it becomes profitable, then uh, we'll put a stop in under under that one. But uh, oil's got to fall below 100 before we can can get there. So thank you, Specular. Yes, please uh, smash the like button for us. We, we greatly appreciate it. And, and uh, uh, the YouTube algorithm hopefully will will start to like us better. We, we could use that. So and, uh, good morning, Tanvir. I saw you earlier and I, I don't recall if I said good morning, but good morning and thank you for joining us as well. So again, uh, you know, we we pretty much have SBXY on our watch list all the time now. So uh, given the current bear market and the volatility, uh, we don't know when uh, volatility is going to spike. We're going to get an opportunity to short the VIX uh, using SBXY. So we're going to Keep that on the watch list. You can put UVXY as well. Something I've shown in the past is sometimes it's easier to see the top and a peak and a turn down than it is to see a bottom and a turn up, just uh, sometimes. And we're going to put VOO there, but as you'll see, uh, we tend to prefer VTI. And I'll, I'll show you the risk reward update to the risk reward profiles. Um, in fact, why don't I go ahead and I'll do that right now. Um, just again, as a, uh, an aside, uh, we do um, also send out updates, interweek updates uh, to our patrons uh, via the Patreon uh, and also put it in the watch list updates channel in our um, Discord. So again, if, if uh, we make any changes interweek, uh, we will put those changes um, in the stock watch list channel in our Discord and email those out to our, our patrons. So if, um, as I mentioned, uh, we were talking about VOO, VTI, and VT, and I do have a separate video on that. Uh, the link's in the description box below. That was a previous analysis. This is my spreadsheet that I use to compare uh, ETFs, look at their risk reward profile, do further research on them. Uh, again, as, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm working on better ways to automate this process. Um, okay, so there's BT. Uh, BT is a, a total world market. Um, I did the analysis on it. It is less attractive than uh, VTI and VOO. And if you listen to that other video, uh, you will hear that... Um, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, the, the biggest companies like the big fangs, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, etc., are the biggest holdings in all of these uh, ETFs. And therefore, there's really no reason to hold multiples of them because they're overlapping. Um, so what we want to do is we want to take the one that has the best risk reward. And that's what the spreadsheet is doing for me is it is analyzing uh, from a 50 week low to high what's the risk reward uh, from a bottom to top. So I look at the FinBiz chart and get the very bottom, very top, what's the risk reward? And then for the most recent support resistance levels, what's the most risk reward? So then I want to put, I want to, you know, pick the one that's got the most attractive risk reward at the time. So I need to update these when, when uh, the 52 week low changes or the top or the support levels change etc. So I've done that recently and we can see right now, given the 52 week lows of VTI and VOO, VTI has a little bit better risk reward profile uh, from a 52 week low to high uh, perspective, but VOO has a little bit better uh, from a uh, support or from a top to bottom. But then if we go support resistance, where again, VTI is a little bit more attractive. And what that tells me is that um, that um, sorry? I was just looking at the chat. That in in a shorter term uh, time frame, we'd prefer VTI, and so that's why we went long VTI. Is 
because from a support resistance, a shorter time frame and a 52 week, a one year time frame, it provided uh, a more attractive risk reward profile. It also happens to be a little bit cheaper uh, if you want to sell covered calls against it. So um, I hope that makes sense. And uh, to respond to Tander's question about posting the link to the Google Doc, yeah, is um, as soon as we finish the live stream, I will post the link to this Google Doc for part two as a pinned comment um, to this video. And you can also find the uh, notes from part one as a pinned comment in uh, part one as well. And it's also in uh, the Discord under the video posting in the YouTube channel the same way I posted the link to the notes Google Doc in the YouTube channel, which you can find up here in our Discord. So there's the YouTube channel. So you can see here was the previous posting for uh, part one, and then I put, I added, I replied to that with the link to the Google Doc, so you can um, access that. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah, I might put it in the description. Um, of the, the videos if, if I've got the URL and it's, it's relatively complete. Yeah, I agree, Douglas. I thought about that. The other man, it, it's fine. Yep, that'll work. Cool. Yes, I, I'm glad. Thank you for the positive feedback on our uh, Discord. Now, we have a suggestion box, and I know Douglas and um, Spacula have added some very helpful uh, suggestions, um, please continue to do so. Any suggestions you have, improvements to our Discord, any additional videos you'd like to see, due diligence on particular stocks. The more feedback I get, um, it helps me prioritize my time. It helps me know what, what do you guys care about? What do you want to see videos on? What do you want changed in the Discord? It, it, again, it helps me prioritize my time to do the things that are most meaningful to you first. So, um, it, again, the more feedback I get from everyone, the better uh, the community is going to be for everyone's mutual benefit. And that's our goal. Is the only reason I'm doing this is to really help y'all. Um, that was my goal. Um, I, I'm, I'll babble for about two minutes and then I'll, I'll shut up about this. <laughs> but uh, one of my main motivations between doing all this YouTube stuff and all that was... Um, we saw what happened to people in 208, 209 when their 401ks got killed and they panicked and they sold and they lost 30% of their retirement funds. And I have been trying to get people to learn not to do that um, because I saw, like I said, I saw people really get hurt and, and we're back there again. Uh, now we're in this bear market. The market's down 20, 30%. People's 401ks are getting crushed because they're stuck in these life cycle mutual funds. And now they're stuck. They either can't retire or they're going to panic and pull out their money at a 30% loss. And uh, it will take them a decade to to recover that um, amount of money. And that's, that's terrible. Uh, that's what I'm trying to uh, help people avoid. But um, okay, I'll get off my soapbox for now. We'll talk about it more later, but uh, it's too late at this point. I, you know, I, several weeks ago, I told people, get your cash out now. Uh, if you were in one of those mutual funds, life cycle funds, I, you know, recommended. This is not financial advice, and I'll throw the disclaimer up again. Um, but, you know, now, again, not financial advice, but if someone were to ask me, what would I do? If uh, my 401k just got clobbered and I was stuck at a 30% loss, I, I, unfortunately, all I can say is don't panic, don't pull the money out, because then you're going to realize the loss. Um, you're going to have to just wait for it to recover. And it, who knows how long that's going to take, but eventually it will recover. The market always tends to go up over time. Um, but, you know, that's, that, that's all I can recommend right now. So, uh, And thank you for all your positive feedback, Spacula, uh, and others. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so back to our regularly scheduled show. Um, let's talk about our bullpen. Um, actually, let me go back to the watch list, and let's just look at what we've got uh, there. So 
here's our watch list. We still got drip. I mentioned drip. That's short on oil. Uh, FTP is kind of broke down. Um, I still like the concept because it's an agricultural product. They're profitable. I still like them. I would like to see them stabilize. And you can see uh, kind of low the price target. So I'm going to leave FTP on there. FKWL is an infrastructure play, and it kind of ran up, so it kind of bucked the market. It's a low float. Um, I'm going to put one of the spatulas, nice comments up, because I appreciate it. <laughs> so, and I'll take it off, because it's blocking, but thank you again, spatula. If I can figure out how to do that. Okay, there we go. So thank you again. Uh, again, that it's kind of low float up the markets, which is interesting. Uh, so we're going to leave that. JBA is coffee. Uh, and again, I like this because uh, it's a consumer defensive. Uh, I think it's an inflation hedge, uh, inflation proof, uh, recession proof, because everybody's going to keep their king coffee. Um, and uh, they're profitable. So and they can raise the prices as the price of coffee goes up or, or inflation goes up. Cold is the short, is the short on natural gas. Uh, we've scalped that before. You can see uh, it is again approaching a bottom. We talked about it in part one. If natural gas spikes up around nine or so, uh, whatever wherever it peaks, uh, we'll probably take an additional scalp on uh, natural gas short uh, using cold. Uh, nice way to make uh, make money is on scalping the tops of those commodities with a, a short ETF. So. LAU is uranium. You can see both of the uranium plays have run up a little bit. Uh, we'll see if they run away or if they come back down. Uh, we like that as a cleaner energy uh, alternative. POW is the ammunition defensive play. Um, also, I saw, uh, yeah, yeah, the ammunition guy. And again, we've talked about uh, two weeks ago uh, that uh, the defense sector is uh, probably going to be pretty inflation-proof or recession-proof as well. Uh, we already own K K Kratos, KTOS. Uh, we're looking at this, uh, POW. Yeah, uh, Douglas said URA, and you'll see uh, when we flip over to my ETFs, I've got URNM. I've been watching too, but uh, it's not attractive enough yet to add to the watch list. So. So we've got POW, SCO we talked about, SVXY, you can see where it is right now. There's where it loaded last time. Uh, Mondays tend to be volatile, and uh, you tend to get these gaps up. Here's here's one of the reasons I get up at 4 a.m. is uh, see this gap up, these uh, gap ups at 4 a.m. So they rebalance these guys at uh, 4 a.m. So sometimes you get a, a quick gap up, gap down, and can get a good price uh, at 4 a.m. And I've got a video uh, you guys could see of what I do at 4 a.m. It's called, uh, it's 4 a.m., do you know where your stocks are? So that's that's why I tend to get up to, uh, and why I love, one of the reasons I love Weeble. And while I'm pumping Weeble, uh, let's talk about that. But um, again at that 4 a.m. sometimes you get gap up gaps down or uh irrational price action uh that give you opportunities um so that's that's why i do it uh, and one of the main reasons we love weeble is that you can trade at 4 a.m and, and as you can see uh get, you can get six free stocks right now for weeble's fourth anniversary uh, birthday right now and using our affiliate Link below. I'll throw that up in the banner so you can see that too. So if you use our referral link in the description box below, you can get six free stocks. And you can see uh, the, the first two are up to $300 each. And uh, once you fund the account with any amount, you get four more valued up to $3,000 uh, each. So um, I heard someone say kind of the bottom is the minimum is like $34 so uh, for that those six stocks but it's free money if you're not already using Weeple uh, like I said it's our favorite platform uh, to trade with and uh, we'd highly recommend it if you don't already have Weeple again if you use our link below uh, you can get six free stocks now uh, it's always pretty much two or more 
uh, and I don't know exactly when that one's going to expire. So, okay, and back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, Douglas was talking about um, URA. Here's another uranium play, another uranium miner, U, 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 which we've swung profitably in the past. Um, and we'll keep an eye on and see if it will come back down. And then we talked about VOO and VTI. Again, we're kind of watching both of them, uh, but our preference would be VTI. And, and we already have a, a very large long position in VTI. Uh, but if you're not already long one of these and you get a dip down like that, uh, these are long-term investments. Uh, we you know, plan to hold them, wait for the market to recover, go up. And then we could either use it as a source of cash or just keep holding it. Over time, um, you know, it's, it's going to go up 10% a year, 10%, 20%. Uh, so it's it's not going to be your, you know, double your money in, in a year or whatever. But uh, it's, a, it's a good place to park some money right out the recession. Um, it, it's relatively stable, so... Excuse me, and welcome to Clean Slate Trades. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so now we're going to jump to our bullpen. And for anybody who happens to be new to our channel, uh, the concept of a bullpen is a set of stocks that we don't watch in real time, but we look at pretty much at the end of each day see if their setup becomes more attractive. If so, we move them up to the watch list. And as you can see, the first one on there that we talked about earlier was Big Lots. We're moving it down to the bullpen because it kind of broke down. So we're waiting for it to reestablish a support level. And if it does, then we will put it back on the real-time watch list. Um, we're also taking off CVU. We had that on for a couple weeks. And they apparently got delisted and move to the OTC. So we're going to take them off. Uh, we do not trade OTC. Uh, I don't buy OTC. I, right now in Weeble, you can't buy OTC. And in things like Fidelity, you can't even buy penny stocks uh, in a retirement account or OTC. So uh, typically when something goes OTC, um, you know, we, we exclude it. We take it off. Uh, Yang, um, that is the bear on the uh, Chinese tech stocks on the FTSE Chinese, and we have swung that very nicely, profitably in the past. Its inverse, you will see also in the bullpen, is yin, Y-I-N-N. -N. So we've got both ends of this swing on the China tech stocks now. We don't want to hold any Chinese stocks. We, we've been out of Chinese stocks since last fall um, and stayed away from them. But this is a great way to scalp uh, those Chinese stocks. And they tend to be volatile. Uh, when uh, the Chinese come out and they uh, get more lax on their restrictions, etc., the, uh, the yen goes up, the yen goes down. And when they come out and they you know, crack down on the tech stocks, then Yang goes up and yin goes down. So uh, you can play whichever of these is, is bottoming at the time and swing it up. So this is a great uh, combination pair uh, that you could swing based on whatever the sentiment in China is at the at the time. And uh, one of the other things I tend to do at 4 a.m. is I flip over. I'll show you this real quick. Um, I don't want to make this too long, but I'll just show you usually in the morning. Uh, at 4 a.m., I jump over to the main screener, and I have one that's set on hottest, and I just flip this over, and then I look at the price change, see, okay, who's, so right now it's showing after hours from Friday, who's the running the most right now, so as of Friday, we can see some of these guys, and then who's the biggest losers right now, so there's a red box, you know. Boyle, BBIG, okay. So again, very quickly you can get a feel for um, the direction, what's running, what's what's down using this hottest screener in Weeble. Uh, this is also a great way to see, well, I bring this up because we were just talking about the Chinese stocks, 
and you can tend to see are they running up or are they running down and that will give you an indication that says okay where's the opportunity is it going to be in yen or is it going to be in yang today um, and again if you're a day trader momentum trader you could just trade that one for the day whichever way uh, the wind's blowing uh, in chinese stocks for the day uh, again you don't want to hold too long and protect your profits right spectacular um, you know, I, I reiterate uh, when one of the, when you get a profit, one of those at least get a stop in under it and protect your profit because the sediment, the wind, wind can shift tomorrow and uh, it'll go the other way. So, cool. Okay, so I think I covered our changes to our bullpen. Uh, whip through them right now. We talked about big lots. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I'm kind of watching cryptocurrency just to see where it's going to bottom. They keep talking about a crypto winner. Um, I, I need to move my line down probably to down here. But I'm uh, not as hip on Bitcoin. I, I'm a little little interested in Ethereum from its NFT standpoint, but uh, I'd probably like it way down here. So I'm going to see. So... It, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, DNN is another uranium play. So like uh, LEU and uh, UUUU, but it's a little bit higher from support. It tends to bottom around 1 or 92. So I'm keeping an eye on it. If it comes down, that's another one we've swung profitable over the years, and I like it. FCAP we've talked about for a couple weeks. The regional bank, it seems to be pretty stable at support. I've tried to buy it a couple times and just hasn't caught uh, because it is such a low float, but it does seem to be stable, so we're keeping an eye on that. Grow is is an investment company. They have investments in cryptocurrency, gold, etc. Pays a dividend. Uh, it's a little high right now. If it comes down, I'll grab that. Grow Q, uh, you can see our due diligence video again in the description box. Uh, it ran up. Uh, it, it, you know, went against the trend of the tech stocks, etc., and is holding up. I'd like it a little bit cheaper. I can't tell if it's going to roll over again or not, uh, but I do like their long-term viewpoint. Uh, these are the ETFs on Treasury. So that guy's on the 20-year. So, okay, so one's long, the yield... That guy must be long the price. That guy must be long yield. And then there's a 7 to 10. So I'm just watching those to see if they bottom. Um, and, and watching the futures of the treasuries as we did in part one. And see if there's an opportunity we want to take advantage of in the bonds. But really until the Fed finishes their quantitative tightening, uh, we don't really know where the bottom is going to be. So... And then we talked about Yang and Yen, and you're welcome, uh, SPAC. So hopefully those, hopefully you'll be able to, to make some money with those again. Again, I think that's a pair that you can trade, you know, very frequently and make good money, uh, just depending on which way the wind is blowing in the Chinese stocks. And you can see it in the screeners of Alibaba, JD, Pinduoduo, et cetera, running up, then Yen's up, Yang's down. And they're all running down, then yanged up, yields down. So uh, you can play it that way. Okay, so I already covered this one, which is VOO versus VTI versus VT. Um, I will very briefly um, talk about gold silver. I promised Tanvir we would talk about uh, gold silver ETFs yesterday. So I'm going to jump over to my uh, ETF comparison spreadsheet again. And actually what I'll do is I will copy these. I'll just take the symbols and the directions. Uh, I'll take gold, silver, and metals. And I will put this whole block in the notes. Um, so you'll have them and, and you should be able to copy out of this document. Let's see how that turns out. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger. I'll, I'll format that later, but hopefully this will help you and you can copy these uh, these guys out uh, later. But let's, let's look at the risk rewards uh, quickly. So you can see there's a number of them that you can play down, and I'll show you a couple others in a minute. Uh, there's DGZ, which is gold short. That's an ETN. There's a, a short on the gold miners called dust. Uh, there's a double short DZZ. So, and then there's a ultra short gold 2X. Uh, and if the, I haven't updated this in a little while, so these, these numbers may have changed a little bit, but you can see if I was going to short gold, uh, the best risk reward from a near term standpoint, uh, 52 week standpoint, looks like dust or DZZ. So, if I were going to short gold, I would go with those unless something changed. If uh, you want a long gold, um, there's GTXU has the best risk reward uh, from a 52 week standpoint, and then JNUG, which is a, a, a junior miners. And it has the best from a long-term standpoint, uh, bottom to top. And then there's also UGL um, and GDX. This is a Van Eck one. Gold miners, GXJ. You can see those are white because uh, their risk reward was not as attractive as ones I already had. So I didn't bother to pursue them further. I said, okay, you know, I, I have the data. Uh, I know what which ones they are, but their risk reward is not as attractive as, as the best ones, too long or short. And then for silver, um, shorting is ZSL is a 2x short, and a 2x long is AGQ. Um, and since those are the only ones, too long or short, uh, in terms of that that mechanism, those types of ETFs, uh, the those are the ones that I would go with. And then there's also one on more general metals and mining called PIC. So again, uh, I'll put all of those. I, I did put all of those in the documents. Let me show you a couple others. Um, so I got those. Then the other one that I mentioned yesterday that we tend to use for gold is GLDI, which is this uh, Credit Suisse ETN. And the reason we use that is not so much for its risk reward as its monthly dividend. Uh, it does swing, so we do swing it. When it tops out, we sell it, and then we buy it back when it swings back down. And in the meantime, we collect this monthly dividend, which is pretty attractive. So um, you can see uh, this guy had a 14% uh, at the time I put that in there. Uh, annual dividend. So, you know, it's beating inflation pretty nicely. And the silver one is SLVO. And we can see it had a 34% annual dividend paid monthly. So again, those guys are great for inflation proofing, um, hedging uh, against a recession, against inflation. Again, gold and silver stores value. Uh, they The price moves up with inflation. And these guys pay monthly dividends. So, um, again, if, if gold and silver prices are down, you wait. Uh, you're still getting a monthly dividend. So, and if it swings up to 2,000, if gold goes and hits 2,000 again, and GLDI hits a peak, I will sell it and we'll buy it back later. So, we've swung it a couple times, made good money, and we'll continue to do so. So, I hope that helps. Um, Tinder says the 2X and 3X make him nervous. Is that because of the rebalancing or just because of the leverage? Um, I do want to eventually make a video uh, specifically defining and explaining how the leverage ETFs work, how the inverse leverage ETFs work, uh, how that rebalancing works, etc. I just I just need the time to get those definitions together. But I, I think, and you guys can give me your feedback, I think that would be helpful. So, And just very quickly, again, um, I won't go into too much detail. I'll just show these very quickly. 
but in terms of logging and shorting some of the indices, and again, we have this list in a number of places. It's in the ETFs channel of our Discord as a pinned comment. You can see uh, that list. Uh, okay, so if I go there to the ETFs channel, I go to the pinned comments. Here's the list, and it tells you, you know, this was on uh, one of the bear markets, how to make money from a bear market um, video as well. We talked about this in more detail. So here's a list of longing and shorting uh, the indices, various commodities, the treasuries, etc. Um, obviously, I've, I've identified more since then, but that's a good starting point if you're looking for a list of ETFs to log short things. Um, and then I have this more detailed video comparing SPXS versus XPXU uh, for shorting and SPXL versus UPRO for logging. And you'll see if I look at my spreadsheet for uh, the S&P, I can see, okay, UPRO is uh, better for longing and SPXS is better for shorting. So again, one of the benefits of doing this analysis and keeping it up to date is I can very quickly see, I look at the futures, I say, oh, I want to short the S&P. Okay, what, what do I short it with? Oh, I short it with that. Or I want to long the S&P. What, what do I long it with? I long it with that. And again, these are leveraged, so this guy's a 3X. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm taking it for a swing. So if I'm going to do a long-term investment, again, I'm going to look at VOO and BTI. Uh, for long-term investment. If I'm looking for profit for price appreciation for a swing, then I'm going to use these leveraged ETFs. And in this case, I'm going to use for the S&P UPRO for up, SBXS for down. So um, I hope that helps. Again, you can uh, see that other video for more details. Um, and shopping list. Um, again, I, I think it's a real good idea, as we've always mentioned, to have a shopping list. What are the stuff you want to buy on the, you know, when the market bottoms? Um, but again, as we've talked about the past couple weeks, I'd highly recommend calling that list. Make sure these are profitable value stocks that are going to make it through a recession. Um, things to watch out for. If they're not making money, um, frankly, I wouldn't, I, we've been ignoring anything that's not profitable right now. Um, I just, you know, I don't even look at it. If, if they're not profitable right now, I, I don't look at them because there's plenty of good, profitable com companies uh, to look at. And again, given raising interest rates, et cetera, um, growth companies, I, I think, are going to get hit. You know, uh, parking your money in a company that you're not going to get the money back for five years or you're not going to make any money, they don't pay a dividend, um, nothing. Uh, you know, fixed income people, retirees, et cetera, they're not going to park their money there. Um, and that's where a lot of the, the, what they call, you know, the big money, smart money is. Uh, and these fixed income funds, retirement funds, uh, pensions, et cetera. So, um, again, I would call it for profitable stocks that are good value, low, low PE. Um, also watch out for debt. If they have a high debt, they potential that that debt is going to become even more burdensome as interest rates increase. So uh, watch out for companies that have high debt. So hopefully that helps. Uh, again, I would call your shopping list. Make sure you've got things that are inflation proof, recession proof, uh, quality companies. Um, and then when they bottom, especially on an irrational day or an irrational dip on earnings of, of them or some other company, I'll buy them, you know, and sit on them. Um, so I hope that all helps. Uh, again, I will put these notes uh, as a pinned comment to uh, this video as well as under, I'll reply to the video posting in the uh, Discord with uh, the link to these notes. Uh, if you have any recommendations for improvement for these live streams, uh, let me know if you still like the live streams better than the premiere of a canned video. I do like the interaction with you all, and I appreciate you being here. Um, and everyone who's watching after the fact, please put your comments in the comments below this video. Join us in the Discord. Uh, provide us with your feedback. Uh, how can we improve, um, et cetera? Um, what other types of videos would you like to see? And we'll 
uh, and how can we help you be successful in your trading? That that is our objective here, and to build a community of, of fellow beach boat traders that help each other out, help us all make money. Again, we can make money in any market, and that's one of our other major points we're trying to convey to everyone. Is yeah, it's a bear market, but there's plenty of ways to make money. In fact, uh, my humble opinion, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I shouldn't say easy because it's not easy, it's hard work, uh, but there's plenty of money that can be made and the fact that the markets tend to go down faster than they come up uh, tells you that there are some really good opportunities there. So um, again, let me know. I will package this up. I'll cut this off unless someone has something uh, they urgently want me to look at. Uh, I don't want these to get too long. Uh, keep them 30, 40 minutes if I can. So. Uh, great. I'm glad to hear it, Douglas. So, yeah, I, I, again, actually there is a folder, um, and I can put that link to the whole folder out there, too. That That's a good point, Douglas. Um, I'll put the link to this whole thing. It has all the notes, and also uh, I'm working hard to make this uh, whole live stream thing more efficient, more effective for all of us um, so you can see i've got some templates to use to to set up the live streams i got the notes etc so and this is public it's all in a public folder so uh, if you go up one level you should be able to get access to all of those if anybody has any problems uh, with access to this folder in the google drive or any of the notes game plan notes etc uh, let me know and i'll see if i can uh, resolve any of those issues okay so again, thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. I, I do greatly enjoy interacting with you. I hope this isn't too uh, scattered. Um, I, I tend to be, you know, more analytic. Uh, you know, I've done live presentations for a very long time, uh, but I, I more, tend to be more analytic and and where I like to sit and think about things and write them down. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm working on so a better way to do the spreadsheets, uh, as I mentioned. I need to, to cut them down and, and make it more useful. So, And you all have a great Sunday. Have a great trading week. Uh, again, let me know in the Discord, Discord of anything else uh, we can help you out with. And then let's go make some money again this week. So you guys have a great one. Thank you again. Thank you all who watched this video after the fact. Uh, please let us know your feedback in the comments. We hope you'll choose to subscribe to our channel, join us in the Discord, etc. So thank you again. Have a great day. Bye.